he would show up on the appointed day and put in a bid to uh, be the contractor. So he shows up and there are his, his fellow contractors, Hans and Mario, and they're waiting outside the Park and Recreation Director's office when uh, Ole gets the nod to come in. And so he makes his presentation to the director and of course the walls and the door are so thin that everyone in the waiting room can hear it as well. And so Hans and Mario hear Ole declare to the director that he can build that shed for $600, 200 material, 200 labor, and 200 for himself. And the director thanks him and Ole leaves. So Hans goes in and Hans apologizes right away that he's not going to have as low a bid as old. He said, but I can build it for $1,200. That's $400 labor, and $400 material, and $400 for me. And the director thanks him and Hans goes on his way. So Mario goes in and Mario says to the director, have I got a deal for you? I'm going to build that shed for $1,800. And the director says, well, hi, is that a deal for me? And Mario says, well, he says, that's $600 for you, $600 for me, and $600 to get to Norwegian to build it. <laughs> because we are caught in the law, we will always try to use it for our own purpose. We'll always twist it and bend it, lessen it and manipulate it so that we can look good or get some benefit out of it. Now make no mistake, we need the law to order our world, to bring some justice. But we must also remember that Christ came to end the law because what the law demands, we do not have. The law demands that we be faithful people. That we have as our God, the God who chooses us. But we'd rather have anyone else, any other God. So Mary comes. She has this nard, this perfume, and she puts it on Jesus' feet. Now you may not think that this is a big thing. I mean, it does sound a little weird to rub perfume on somebody's feet when they're sitting at the table. But remember, they were reclining at a low table, and when you recline at the table, the person next to you doesn't have their elbow next to you, they have their feet next to you because you're head to toe around the table. And so it's nice to have those feet either washed or sweet smelling. But Mary puts burial oil on Jesus' feet. She has heard him prophesy, she has heard him declare that he is going to be killed, but on the third day be raised from the dead. She knows that this Passover will see the end of him, and that on the third day when they go to the tomb, if it is indeed true, if his words are indeed prophetic, if she takes our Lord at his word, there will be no body to anoint. And so she comes ahead of time and anoints her Lord. Jesus' death, Jesus' death on the cross is his death under the law, his death worked by Caiaphas and the religious leaders taking him, accusing him under religious law, convicting him under Jewish law, convicting him under Roman law, and executing him to expose that the law cannot accomplish the thing that it demands, and it demands faith. What you only have 
through the presence of Jesus Christ. The law demanded in those agrarian societies. The law demanded that no matter how hungry you were come spring. The law demanded that the last of the grain be saved for seed. If you had no seed to plant, you had no hope of harvest and no possibility of life through the next winter. And you catch the flavor of that. At the end of our psalm, you catch the flavor where it says, Those who sowed with tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. Catch again the sense that the people are taking to the fields and putting in the dirt all they have to live on with the expectation that the harvest would yield abundantly. At the graveside, when we commit our family and friends to the earth. You hear Jesus declare to his disciples, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. Mary is celebrating, acknowledging with faithfulness that Jesus is the grain of wheat, the seed of the new creation, to be sown into the earth, to be placed in the tomb, in order to be the harvest of first fruits that will be raised from the dead into the new creation. And so it is with us. So it is with us caught in this paradoxical tension between the establishment of the law and the end of the law that we too, we too carry that seed to the well-ordered rows of our cemeteries and plant it in the ground with the expectation of a harvest to come. And we do that until the day we ourselves are so carried and planted with the expectation of an abundant harvest. And our Lord Jesus, who has gone before us, who has been through the gate and of the grave of and death, who has been raised from the dead as the first fruits of that harvest, when he is revealed in all his glory, then we will come, we will come with shouts of joy, bearing the sheaves of our new life in that harvest that is the new creation. Thanks be to God.